All right, howdy bot builders. How is everyone going? Happy Tuesday. I had to think about that for a second, but it is indeed Tuesday. Uh, I'll wait for a couple of minutes as people, you know, slowly trickle in. We're just at the 3 p.m. mark. Uh, I want to say I'm really loving these 3 p.m. Tuesday streams. It uh, coincides really well with my afternoon espresso, and uh, I can't complain about that. And I really love to get to doing some bot building with everyone. So, you know, truly no complaints around here. I have, um, <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you for that emoji in chat, Sabrina. That is absolutely correct. Uh, I have a kind of a slightly different plan for us today. This, uh, this was born out of an idea I had falling asleep last night. Um, and, uh, and so maybe actually as, as I take a couple of minutes to get the stream going, maybe I'll just run all of you through the idea that I had. So for today's stream, typically the way I run these streams is I take note of what you all are having problems with throughout the week or what most of the common questions are uh, throughout the week, the previous week. And I run you through some examples of how to use those features or how to manage those things uh, in BotPress. And I think today I'd kind of like to take a, take a step back and, and agglomerate everything or uh, put everything together, as it were, in, uh, in one big bot. So I'm going to challenge myself, and I don't, I don't know how this is going to go, uh, but I'm going to challenge myself to build a bot from A to Z using one of every card or one of every feature that BotPress has to offer. So you can really see like soup to nuts uh, how a BotPress bot is put together. I've seen a lot of comments on our YouTube channel and also in streams from some of you as well who are watching uh, about questions like, hey, I'd like to see you put uh, a lot of more things together instead of kind of just these disparate pieces. So that's what I'm going to do today. That's kind of the goal for uh, the next hour is I'm going to give you maybe a taste of every single feature that BotPress has to offer in one in one compact bot. I'm going to, uh, I'll take it slow and I'll, I'll walk us through each feature or each card or each node or whatever the case may be as, as I'm building. Um, but that's kind of the plan for today. One thing I want to say right off the top of the bat is... Uh, if you're in chat, will this event be uploaded to YouTube later? Joseph, yes, it will be. So you can uh, you can catch up on previous streams there, or you can watch this one as well. Uh, but so one thing I want to ask from all of you, if there are specific cards that you want to know about or things you want me to spend a little bit of extra time on, that's totally fine. Just let me know in chat. And um, I'm, I'm always watching chat, so uh, just keep uh, uh, keep um, I'll keep an eye on that for, for any of the questions you have. So for example, Steve, uh, I want a user to be able in tables to display some data from a table just by asking, uh, show me data where age is over to 20. So like that's the kind of question that I'm going to be addressing today. Uh, Steve, for your specific question, that's uh, it's a really good one. That feature is something that we're currently in the process of building out. So the ability to query tables as a bot user uh, from for a certain piece of information or a certain filter. Uh, however, we can still, you as the bot builder or you the bot owner, you can still filter table information. So I'll show you how to do that as part, that's, I did, I do have some notes for today and I will be jotting, uh, I did jot that down. So uh, we will be, we will be handling tables today as well because I know that's a, that's one of the features that you all have questions about. Okay, perhaps without further ado, uh, we'll just get jumping right into it. Um, so as usual, I've got my studio here. Um, Will I work with hooks today? Hey, that AI guy, uh, great question. Hooks are outside the scope of uh, what, I, what I call like the basics or the kind of bot press like beginner office hours. So that's maybe a question for Jesse on Thursdays, or it's also a question for like our dev channel um, or also just the general help channel if you're running into a specific question or a specific problem. Um, but I, I won't be working with webhooks today. That's a very good question. That's slightly outside of the scope for this channel or this uh, this particular one. I also do want to say uh, perhaps like execute code or calling APIs. Those are things that I'm going to leave to my developer colleagues. Uh, surprise, I'm not a developer. Uh, so, so those are things I will leave to the experts. Uh, oh, actually, OK, I'm so sorry. Uh, before we get started, or perhaps actually maybe I'll make this part of the stream, but I'm going to say uh, I'll use a comment node, which I love, or a comment card rather, and I'll place it here. And I'm going to make it uh, emerald, and I'm going to make the size very big, and I'll say, welcome, bot ambassadors. This is very exciting. Uh, so uh, hey, Simply Great Games. Hey, hey JR. Uh, welcome. It's really, I'm, I'm glad to see you all here. Uh, if you're watching the recording of this, or if you're in chat and you're like, what the heck is going on? Um, we recently launched uh, what we're calling the Bot Ambassador Initiative. So uh, a project where we get to recognize members of the community who have had a really big impact on helping others build bots. Or they're just doing some really cool stuff with BotPress. 
Um, I'm, I'm going to soapbox for a sec. If you're if you're a regular on these streams, you know that Robert loves his soapbox uh, and so a soapbox he will. Uh, but I want to say, like, I've worked in open source for many years. Uh, BotPress has its roots in, roots in open source tech. And I think um, many years ago, someone said that software is going to eat the world and, and someone software will devour the world. Hey, Decay. Uh, and and, and I, I don't think that's true. And if anything, I know that's not what the person meant, but if anything, software has allowed us to um, build on common goals and projects together. And it's really exciting to see uh, people from all walks of life doing all different kinds of things, working together and helping each other. Um, at the root of all of this is community. So whether you're building software or 200 years ago, you're, you're doing something else. Um, I, it's really exciting to see community wherever you are. So like you all know I'm a big gamer. Gaming relies and thrives on communities. And this really feels no different. Um, so I just want to say a huge shout out to uh, all of the people who applied for the Botbassador program, this first round of Botbassadors. It's really exciting to see um, everyone together. If you, have a, if you have applied or you haven't applied yet, there's information on our website uh, and on our Discord server about this. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, do just poke around there and... Uh, and um, You'll, you'll find some information. If you've asked a question on our Discord server, chances are you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's uh, whenever we're sleeping, there's always someone there to answer your questions or, or, or help you build bots or just do cool stuff with bot press. Um, okay, that's, that's, Robert's, uh, that's Robert's soapbox for today. But yeah, really exciting to see. As a, as a tech professional, it's really motivating to see community um, organize or conglomerate around um, uh, pieces of software like this. I think it's proof that tech doesn't have to be the kind of um, uh, impersonal business um, endeavor that people make it out to be. Um, okay, Black Wolf, we need tables as KB will be a game changer. Listen, you know I agree with you. Uh, I, I, I can't, I mean, I'm gonna like, I'll wink at you, but I'm gonna say I can't share this yet, any information with you, um, but one day, in the near future, I hope to have, oh, I got something in my eye. Uh, I hope to have some information to share with you. <laughs> but uh, for now, let me just get this thing out of my eye. Oh, okay, what's that? Beta, what's that? Oh, no. okay, never mind. Uh, all right, back to the actual, uh, the actual pro regularly <laughs> scheduled programming for today. Uh, so the plan for today is I'm just gonna do as I normally would. I build a lot of bots, both for testing um, all of your problems on Discord, uh, testing new features, all that kind of stuff. So I kind of have a routine that I go to for building bots, and I think it will be helpful for all of you to see uh, how I build a bot from soup to nuts. I, I do love that saying, um, and, and kind of the steps that I take. So I'll start here um, at the start node. I like to move my end node away because I'm not gonna need it yet. I'll deal with it later, but I'm not even gonna think about the end of my conversation. And I'll start my conversation. Uh, uh, one of the most like exciting features in BotPress history, I think, is is triggers. So the ability for users to start um, your bot to start a conversation on its own. So I'm going to uh, just place a very simple conversation started trigger at the beginning of my bot to get that to start my bot. And so that's my the very first note I'm going to place is that, uh, and then and then we'll build from there. Okay. So conversation started. Now my bot will send the first message. It's going to begin uh, here at this node. And so the first thing I'll say is um, I have a fun, <laughs> I have a fun little thing. Uh, I'm going to use an audio card. Normally I start my bots with a text card, but today since I kind of want to show all of you all of the things BotPress can do, we're going to send an audio card. I pre-recorded some audio. I hope that it comes through on Discord. Uh, if not, I can. It's just me speaking, so I'm happy to do the. Uh, do the audio for you. Uh, here, where where are you? Don't look at my downloads. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, so uploading audio, this is just an MP3 file that I have. Uploading audio is as simple as that. You can use this uh, for accessibility. If your user maybe um, is using a site helper uh, online, you can also send audio messages. So I, I personally love these, and also they're kind of fun. Um, so I'll say, welcome to BotPress. And of course, we'll start testing. So I'll say hi. And uh, in chat, can you can you let me know? Oh, hang on. Okay, so troubleshooting moment. So in the emulator, your emulator won't recognize triggers. So for testing, I do always connect my start node, but there's no need to do this in your actual deployed bot. Um, all right, we'll try that one more time. I'll say hi, and then we have this audio message that I'm I'm going to be sending to my user. Can you in chat let me know if you hear this? <laughs> Welcome to BotPress. Uh, did that did that audio come through? <laughs> No, it didn't. Okay, so I'm 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 gonna play it on my end, and I'll I'll say the audio um, here in my in uh, in the mic. All right, here it is. <clears throat> well, Welcome to, to BotPress. Bot 
it's just me doing that. It's it's not uh, it's nothing more exciting than that. <laughs> but you know, maybe I maybe I had a career as a, an announcer somewhere. So sending audio messages in BotPress is is, uh, is as easy as that. I'll also send a video uh, a video card as well because I want to give this kind of like multimedia feeling uh, to this to this bot. So I'm going to upload a video that I I did make this earlier. There's no audio on this one, um, and I'll just say here we go. Welcome. So so far we've used an audio card. We've used a video card. Uh, I'll maybe I'll throw in an image as well. Why not? Um, and maybe I'll, I'll pop in the, the BotPress logo that I have here. And I'll just call it BotPress. And so now we've got kind of this like multimedia welcoming experience for our user that I'll, I'll test out here. Uh, so if I say hi and I begin interacting with my bot, we get three messages instantly because they're all placed in the same node. So we get the audio message from earlier. You all remember what this sounds like. Uh, let me play this video for you. Isn't that pretty? I thought that was very, I made this earlier. <laughs> I thought that was very pretty. Uh, and then you just have to send an image like this. So. Uh, this is how you send video, audio, and just a simple message or an image uh, in a in a BotPress bot. Of course, these don't all have to be in the same node. They don't have to be sent the same way. Uh, but this is how I'll be beginning this bot's conversation. There are different ways you can do this, but this is how I'll be doing it. Um, okay, so pretty standard stuff so far. Uh, I think one piece of good bot hygiene that I want to instill into all of you, and I know not all of you do this because I see your report IDs and I load all of your bots and I see them, uh, but naming your, your nodes is a really great way to make sure that you stay organized. So if I just say welcome, then I'll know that when I talk about the welcome node, I'm referring to uh, the, the welcome node here. Okay, uh, the next step I'm going to do is I'm done with this node. I want to move to the next one because the next thing I'm going to be doing is not welcoming my user, but I'm going to be doing something else. So it doesn't fit this action or this card. It doesn't fit in the welcome node. So I'm going to move them over to another one. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to use a flow logic card. Uh, if you're new to BotPress, flow logic manages how um, you transition your user from one node to the next. So I'll take the expression card. I'll put it here. Expression cards allow you to define the conditions for a transition. In this case, that's every time, and uh, and we'll go into the next node. And so there we go. Um, already, we're we're if you can achieve this, we we've built a pretty, in my opinion, successful bot because we've uh, we've done something useful and we've done something cool that we couldn't do before. Uh, let me take a pause here and catch up on chat. How far are we? How far away are we from being able to use other models than GPT 3.5, GPT 4? Yeah, um, Decay, this is a great question. I'm going to continue saying the classic startup soon answer uh, in that I can't provide a specific timeline, but we know you want this. We want this too. I use BotPress every day. BotPress is on my personal website. It's something I use. Um, GPT 4 is a lot. Um, I will say GPT 4 is a lot more expensive than 3.5. So we're figuring out how to make this cost effective for you and for us to make sure that you don't blow through like your your free allowance. And then also, um, you know, we have money to continue building bot friends. <laughs> those are those are all things that we're, we're figuring out. Um, I'm going to also say here, maybe I'm not allowed to say this, but I'm going to say like, um, uh, it's not just GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, but also you know other models uh, that people are interested in using as well. But also custom models. I see Claude with a wink. I'll wink back at you. Uh, but equally, if you're if you work in AI or you're familiar with the AI, AI space, everybody seems to be moving towards proprietary models. Uh, these are all all things that we're aware of. I can't make any promises, obviously, and I'm not going to say that these features are coming. Um, but I, I want to be transparent and say that we work in AI too, so we know exactly what people want and what you're all thinking about. Um, so, so I'm going to say a, a big wink there, but of course the spirit here is that we're, we're building these things together. All right, back to our bot. Uh, so we welcomed our user. What do we want to do next? Uh, I'm going to say, I'll take a step back here and I'll say I am building this bot from the perspective of, uh, I just want to throw it onto my BotPress website. I just started up this startup called BotPress. I don't really know what I need, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw this bot up here and we'll, we'll see what we do. Um, so that, that's the kind of backstory for this, for this colorful bot. Um, all right. So in the spirit of today's uh, stream, what we're doing is we're using one of every card. So I'm going to continue on my journey of using these send message cards. And I'll, maybe I'll close these to keep the card tray a little more organized. So let me send a quick card. A card is going to combine a lot of things. It's going to combine a title, a subtitle, so maybe some information you want to float to a user, an image, and my favorite thing, an action button. So I'll say, uh, like, welcome to BotPress. Um, BotPress is the best. And I put two S's there on purpose. Did you see what I did? Because uh, BotPress is the best. I thought that was pretty funny. 
Uh, I'm going to I'm going to add an image here. I'm going to use uh, the same bot press image I used previously. And for an action button, uh, there are two things I want to draw your attention to here, because this is stuff that I think um, is obvious to me as, as someone who works here. But I think it's worth repeating, especially for our new to bot press builders. Uh, this icon or this symbol here indicates that this field or this thing supports variables. So let's say you want the action button to be dependent on something your user has entered previously. You would use this um, and then it supports variables in that way. I'm not going to be doing that now because that's a bit advanced. And of course, we haven't collected any information from our user yet, uh, but we will talk about variables later on. So don't worry about that. For now, I'll just add one action by item. I'll label it visit uh, and I'll link to the BotPress website. And so uh, instead of calling this node standard one, maybe we'll call it visit. And of course, the next step is to test everything. So periodically, we're going to send all our messages. And see here, we get our card. So we see the title, Welcome to BotPress. We see BotPress is the best. Uh, the subtitle here and then the, the link here uh, will work. I'm not going to click it because I don't want to leave this tab. But you'll see BotPress.com in the bottom left corner. OK, so that's a simple card. Um, and so we've, we've our bot's getting a bit more complex. We want to give more information to our user. Uh, and we want to get, you know, we want to get a little fun. We want to have a little fun with it. So let me let me add a carousel as well. Um, a carousel is just multiple cards that you'll be able, or your user, will be able to scroll through. And some of you have been asking, like, what kind of information should I put in a carousel? Or what's, like, appropriate for a carousel? <laughs> there's, no, there's no right or wrong answer. If you're a regular on these streams, you know I, I don't like to answer questions like this because there's no right or wrong way to do stuff. Uh, there's, there's only your way. I used to teach children, and, and I think that comes through in like all of my, all of my teaching here. Soup recipes, yeah, that's very on brand for for me. Um, I do love soup. I'm gonna one up you, and I'm gonna show you something better than soup. I'm gonna show you my colleagues, uh, but because I have these images prepared. Uh, so what I'll say is, um, uh, maybe before I send this carousel, I'm thinking the idea is I want to introduce the person interacting with my bot to the bot press team, super colleagues, as David says. So I'll say, I'll send a text message card and I'll say, uh, here are some members of the bot press team. And so now uh, I'll just do this here. So title, first one's gonna be Jesse. And I'll say, Jesse's a cool guy. And I'm not gonna add an action item to Jesse or an action button rather. Uh, but you might say something like, if you wanna link to his social channels, for example, like these are all really valid use cases. Uh, if you wanted to link to his LinkedIn or his Twitter or X, profile. Uh, those are things you could do here as well. And so this is, again, a great way of um, uh, we're adding personality to your business or we're, we're adding, uh, you know, we're putting the face to the name as it were. So that's Jesse. He's a cool guy. I'm going to click add carousel cards to add another one. Uh, we're going to throw in Patrick. I'm going to say Patrick's also a cool guy because uh, he, he is. So I've got this image of Patrick saved on my computer. Uh, and of course, I'm going to add myself because uh, I'm me. And I'm going to say uh, Robert's just all right because I don't want to gas myself up too much. And so let me add this image of myself. And uh, maybe that didn't work, who knows? <laughs> and so now let's troubleshoot and let's see if that worked. Uh, so I'll say, hi, we get Jesse in the carousel. That's great. Uh, we get Patrick in the carousel. That's great. And then my image didn't show up. So now I'm like, hmm, why didn't this work? Uh, so now we'll troubleshoot live together and I'll delete the image and I'll try again. So, uh, bum, bum, bum. It worked this time. Let me double check. And so this is the beauty of bot building is sometimes you just got to double check. And there we go. So this is the carousel. These are um, uh, these are this is how the carousel works. And um, one thing I will note about the, the use of carousel cards, these fields are mandatory. And so if you don't include them, uh, it might mess with your um, it might mess with the, the way that your carousel appears both here and on web chat. And finally, the carousel, uh, we, you can see here in the URL that we give you, we host your images on AWS. Sometimes it takes a minute or two for that image to appear. I, I don't know why. I couldn't tell you. Uh, but if you're running into problems with your carousel showing images on web chat, I'm going to say wait a minute or two. Uh, make sure that your bot is published. And then usually the image will appear um, after. But if that is happening to you and it does appear after, do let us know on Discord because I need to diagnose these issues. All right, let's take stock of where we are so far. So this is another good habit in bot building is um, recreate your user journey from the beginning. You can do this in the emulator. 
uh, but you also want to be able to like understand in your head what your bot is doing. So, so far, pretty simple. The bot begins the conversation with the conversation started trigger. We welcome our user to BotPress in a variety of media ways. Uh, and then we thank, we encourage them to visit our website because that's what we want. If you had a different um, CTA here, that's call to action, uh, you might send them somewhere else. Maybe you want them to follow you on Twitter. Maybe you want to update this every day, depending on you know what the current campaign is. Uh, that's something you might change there. But this is, so, so far we, we welcomed our user. Um, in the next steps, we're going to get into things like capturing information from that user, storing that information in a table, and then querying some of that information uh, later on. Robert, I noticed there are not customizable in the advanced styler. Um, is that possible in the future? When you say they, oh, do you mean carousels? Uh, do you mean carousels are not customizable in the advanced styler? Is that possible in the future? Uh, yeah, so carousels is like, it's definitely something that we are um, actively trying to make better because I know a, a while back some of you were having issues with them. Uh, I don't know if this is a specific feature, so can you let can you pop this in feature requests as always if it already doesn't exist? Um, because I would like to know like, what kinds of use cases are you imagining for the uh, customizable carousels? Uh, are you talking like image size? I know that's something that people have asked. Um, what kind of customizations would you like to see? And what is the use case? Actually, I will, I'll pause here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let all of you in on a little secret. Uh, when you're requesting features from BotPress, we love to see it. It really helps us if you can describe like what the use case you have for it is, um, what your business goal is or what you're trying to achieve and what you've tried right now that doesn't work. Uh, cause that helps us diagnose like, okay, cause you, you can't actually do this or this is something, this is why you want it. Uh, so when you're requesting features, this is what we, we love to see. Probably colors. Yeah, maybe to make them more in line with your uh, your branding. That that totally makes sense, of course. All right. Uh, so, so far we've welcomed our user, we've prompted them to visit our website, but maybe they have a specific question or maybe I have some specific questions for them. So here's what I'm gonna say. Uh, I'm going to uh, now, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna do a little magic uh, and I'm gonna collect some information from my user. So I'm gonna close these message cards and I'll go into my capture information tray or the capture information portion of the tray. And what I'll say is I want to capture information from my user and I'm interested in lead gen. I, I Maybe I'm the, the growth uh, manager at my startup or maybe I have seven different hats and one of them is growth or one of them is sales or whatever. Uh, and um, I want to I want to work on capturing leads or even just getting more information about my leads. Uh, so I want to know things like what's their name, their email, really simple things. And then I also want to know like how many people work for this company and is it worth my time um, uh, following up with them or should I just send them to my social channels or my documentation or whatever. So uh, depending on you know what your um, what your goals are as a business. Maybe you want freelancers and you want to avoid large businesses. Uh, the point is you want the ability to filter those leads that way automatically. You, you don't want to have to pour through sheets and sheets of data uh, to do it on your own. That's very frustrating. So what I'll say is um, I'm going to say I'll give them a single choice. And so the single choice capture card, what this does is it presents your user with multiple options, makes them pick one. So. I'm gonna say uh, something like, what would you like to do? And uh, I'm not gonna store the result in a variable, but I'm gonna add them, I'm gonna add some choices. For the sake of this example, I'll just give two. I'll say like, um, I have a question about bot press. And the second example will just be like end conversation because I'm done. Um, so if they select end conversation, I'm gonna pop them to the end node that we talked about earlier. And if they have a question about bot press, I will send them on their merry way to the next one. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is call this node question because of course they have a question and that's how they ended up here. And so now we've allowed our user to prompt, uh, to prompt us for a question. So let's talk about how to do this. So one of bot press's core functionalities or features is that it eliminates from you the uh, chore or the deed of having to do manual Q and A. So if there are questions that are easily answerable from, let's say, your website, but you don't want to, um, you don't want to. Uh, I don't want to say waste, but you don't want to spend a lot of your SE's time, for example, um, answering simple questions that your uh, user could reference on the website. You can use BotPress to do this. On the flip side, as a user. 
I don't want to have to pour through a company's website. Websites are, you know, a lot of them are bloated these days and like really gigantic and there's a ton of information on them. So it's not necessarily the most user friendly experience. So you can pre be pretty confident that users are not going to want to um, uh, just pour through your website. But what if BotPress could do it for you? So for example, um, here they have a question. We know they have a question. And so now I want to support the ability to uh, answer this question. So we're going to go into, uh, we're going to leave the studio for a sec. We're going to go into the knowledge agent menu. So agents, uh, let's, a little brief intro to agents. There are global settings or global tools or things working behind the scenes to configure your bot in a certain way or to make your bot do certain things or help your bot um, act. And so you can think of these as like little employees that your bot has just chilling behind the scenes. So today we're going to take a look at the knowledge agent. If you've been on BotPress for a while, I am very excited to show you a crisp UI refresh uh, for the agent menus. It looks a lot better, uh, it's a lot easier to scan for information, and it's just pretty. We love pretty things. Uh, so here in the knowledge agent, uh, you can read through all of this. If you're watching the YouTube recording of this, you can pause and just read through this or pop over to the studio yourself and, and give it a read. But what this does is it allows you to upload or use a knowledge base, i.e. a website or a document or a, a text document or a file. Uh, and then your bot will look for answers using AI and then spit that answer back to your user who asked a question. So I see everything is set up. My knowledge agent is configured. So I'm going to leave that as is. Um, and I'm just going to make sure that it's enabled by making sure enable agent is toggled on. Now in the node, uh, you'll see here when you click into a node and you, you search for more information on the inspector window, it's going to prompt you to enable knowledge answering. You of course want to toggle this on because what this will do is tell your bot, I want to, um, I want you to search my knowledge base to answer questions. So how do you get that user question? How do you get that question from your user? You use, um, there are a couple of different ways you can do this. Robert's preferred method is a raw input card. Since we know that they ended up at this node by asking, by saying, I have a question, we can just use the raw input card to say, sure, what's your question? And maybe I will save this to a variable called, let's call it user question. I want to say I'm doing a lot of this on the fly. So a lot of these are instincts that I have uh, just from doing this for a long time. If you have questions in chat about why I did a certain thing, or if you're watching the YouTube recording of this and you want to know why I did a certain thing, uh, do leave a comment or just ask me and I'm uh, happy to fill you in. So I'm saving this question to a variable because I might need it later. And now you might be asking yourself, but Robert, um, how does your hair always look so good? No, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Uh, you might be asking yourself, Robert, uh, how do I make sure my bot knows where to answer from? What is my bot going to answer? Uh, let me show you. So we need a knowledge base. So I've been kind of skirting around this, but the question is, uh, we, we, I need a knowledge base to uh, answer from, and so I'm going to add a knowledge base using this button at the top here, the kind of little book icon. So I'll call this one uh, just BotPress because the information is about BotPress. Um, and I'll, I'll start adding my knowledge base, but I have a question in chat. Um, does it make sense to convert PDF to minimum content as possible, or it doesn't matter for agent? Um, this is a good question about knowledge base formatting. I'm going to say length doesn't super matter, uh, as long as you fit within the, the kind of storage quota that we offer you here of 5,000 vectors. The, the length is fine. The formatting of your information might be more important. So for example, if you have long lists or your information is really unstructured, any, bot, any AI model is going to have a harder time reading that than information that is really nicely structured and organized. I think, for example, um, you are the perfect example of this as a human. You have, easier, you have an easier time scanning information, reading information that is laid out really well than information that is kind of globbed all over the place in one big paragraph. Um, so I'm going to, I will leave that as well. Uh, yeah, try not to have images. That's the kind of thing. Um, and how does your hair look so good? It's a trade secret. Who can say? <laughs> Uh, but that's a good question. I wouldn't waste your time converting it to minimum content, but I would pay attention to formatting. So knowledge base source, uh, I'm going to say web search. And uh, maybe I just want to add from a URL. So for example, um, I'm going to <laughs> copy this example and I'm going to use the BotPress website because uh, I want to supply my user with the ability to query my website without having to click through every page on my website. Um, oh, hang on, did that not work? In that case, maybe I'll just use a web search to search on the specific website, botpress.com. OK. So now I have this web search knowledge base, so hopefully that should be working. Um, but of course, let's double test. 
double check to make sure that uh, everything is happening here. Okay, so I'll say hi. You see I get visited, I get all of the information here, I get my, <laughs> my welcome from the BotPress team, uh, and I'll say I have a question for BotPress. And I get prompted for my question, so I'll say, what is BotPress? I don't know. And this should work. Uh, this should provide us with an answer. And so we see answer found in knowledge base, chatbot software, developer experience, French, Arabic, Spanish, beautiful. So this is a really simple example of how knowledge base uh, knowledge answering works. So that works really well. Um, so far, my user has the ability to answer questions. Now, um, there are a couple of different ways you can go about this here, but I'm going to give the simplest example, which is just asking my user what they want to do next. There are different ways that you could prompt your user to go to the next node. So you can use intense, you can use natural language understandings, um, natural language understanding, NLU, to interpret what your user is saying to move them down the correct path. That's a bit advanced for this video. I want to show you like a basic bot from start to finish. So I'll just ask them. I'll just say, uh, do you have another question? And I'll give them a choice again. So I'll say, uh, do you have any other questions? And I'll, if they say uh, no, then I'll redirect them to the end of the conversation. If they say yes, I will redirect them back to this node right at the beginning. So they just get the ability to ask a question again. And then maybe I want to add a third option. Um, maybe I want to do... Um, Maybe I want to do a little something else, so we'll see. So I'm just going to leave an X here for now, and uh, and we'll fill it in. Okay, so I need to take care of this no. I'm going to move it over uh, to the end, and so this is another place where our user can end the conversation. Uh, and then if they say yes, they get to ask a question again, and then let's just say like move on, and we'll do something else. Uh, Robert, what do you think about videos with intents and entities? I know you got a video with intents, but not with entities also. Maybe a good idea or something similar. Yeah, this is a good question. Um, Black Wolf, if you have a specific question about using entities um, or intents together, it's really helpful for me to understand like what is the problem you're running into so I can show you like very specifically uh, what the solution for that problem is. All right. So uh, let's see what happens if we hit the move on. And I'm just going to add them to a new node. Let me see my notes here. Ah, OK. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask them for one more question. And maybe I'll say, like, um, hmm. OK, now we're doing something creative together. We're doing something live. And so I'm wondering about maybe the best way to show you this. So here, all right. Um, so this is the beauty of bot building is sometimes you have to go back and change what you did previously or you your manager comes to you and says to you, hey, uh, is it possible to track all of the people um, or record all of the, the leads that are talking to our bot? And you say, uh, yeah, I can do that, no problem. So let me go back and edit my bot to do that. So now I go back to my bot and I ask myself, okay, at what point in this conversation would it make sense to ask my user uh, some introductory questions like how many people work for their org or uh, what is their name and email address? And after having done this for a while um, and probably interacting with bots yourself, you might you might say like at the beginning of the conversation is probably the best. Um, so here's what we'll do. Before I ask my user if they have any questions or any, anything like that, before we do that, I'm going to ask them some information about themselves. So I'm going to add a new node here, and I'll call this one user info. Um, I also want to shout out, this is the beauty of the fact that everything in BotPress is just drag and drop, is that it's just really simple to make changes on the fly, and it's not um, it's not daunting, right? So you're not rewriting like lines and lines and lines of code. You're kind of just moving, uh, you're just moving things around. So here, uh, maybe I'll start this node by saying, uh, let me ask you some questions about yourself. And of course, you can write whatever you want here. Um, but I'm going to capture some more information, and we know what capture information cards are. So I'm going to ask for their name, their email, and to continue on with this example, I'll ask how many people work for uh, your org. So I'll say bum, -ba -da -bum, person name. I'm going to ask for email address, 
And the last thing I'll ask for is just number. And this is just going to be the variable number of employees. So here I'll say, what's your name? Email address, I'll say, what's your email? And then number, I'll say, how many people work for your company? And I'll save all of these two variables. So I'll call this one username. I'll call this one uh, user email. And I'll call this last one num employees. Uh, all right, before I hit enter on this, I want to one quick shout out or one like Robert tip for all of you. Um, if you've never heard of the term camel case or if this is something that is new to you, what you see here, um, I'm starting the word number, num, in lowercase. And when I switch over to employees, I'm using a capital E. This makes it easier for you to scan or your collaborators to scan uh, information. So instead of just one jumble of lowercase letters, it's easier to, to read this quickly. So we save that information in num employees. So now let's uh, let's zoom out for a sec. I'm asking my user what's their name, what's their email, how many employees work for their company, and now I'll ask them what do you want to do next? Like do you have a question for BotPress and whatnot? So I'll use a flow logic card to make sure they get to the user info node here, and I'll just pop them down to that node. Okay. So uh, let me catch up on chat for a sec. I am working on a real estate bot, so intents and entities related to real estate would be great. Interesting. Okay, so um, Black Wolf, whenever you have a chance, can you uh, maybe like send me a message in general or on like feature requests would be fine too. Because um, I'm curious to know, like in this specific use case, what are you looking to use entities for, uh, and how? And um, uh, uh, like, I would love more details about this, so I can like maybe tailor this piece of content to you. I'm also not opposed to making tutorials that are vertical specific. So if you're out there and you're like, I ha I own a salon, I want to know a, like how to build a a salon bot, like totally happy to help you. Um, also invite me to your salon because I I you know I love a good salon. Uh, in any case, back to our bot. So now I'm collecting all of this information, but uh, if you work in lead gen and you're watching the stream or the, the recording later and you're like, but I, I, I need to be able to record all of that information somewhere and I only want to talk to or like I only want to follow up with uh, users who have um, uh, who work for a company that has more than 100 employees because I know they'll have the buying power to buy my software. Uh, well, let me show you how to do this. So the first way we would do this is we would use a table. Um, so this is BotPress's like in-house ability to store information in um, a flexible way that allows you to then retrieve that information later on. So let's call this uh, leads. So we'll call this table leads. And what information do we want to store here? Well, we want to store name. Uh, we want to store the email of our lead. And we want to store uh, employees, so the number of employees. Uh, so. I want to, I'm going to take a pause here and catch up on chat, but there is a mistake on screen. <laughs> can anybody spot my mistake? Because I can spot it because I've done this before. Uh, and I'm not going to say that I planted this mistake so I could ask you, but I, I did do that. <laughs> so is anyone able to spot the mistake that I have based on like my use case and what it is that I want to do? Um, this is kind of like, this is a bit arcane, but anyways. Uh, question one, how big are your family tents? Do, do, do. Yeah, Decay, that's smart. I, I appreciate the uh, question one, answer one, question two, answer two. I think that's right. Uh, if nobody has an answer for what is the mistake that I have on screen, then perhaps I've failed all of you, or maybe I've failed myself. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, will you show how to have localized chat? What do you mean by localized chat? What is the, can I ask you for some more details about that? different languages. I won't be showing the translator agent today, uh, but I, I will say you can do that. There are tutorials on our Discord server um, about um, about uh, changing the language of your bot. You would do that via the translator agent over here. So you could just pop into the translator agent here, turn this on. Uh, but again, if you're looking for an in-depth tutorial on this, we have one on our YouTube channel and in the tutorial section on Discord. So we've got you covered there. Uh, you didn't, you didn't, you have to put the name of the variable? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, right off the bat, my bot has no way of getting this information. Like just because I have a column called name and email, there's no, it's not going to pull that information from anywhere. So that's a problem right away. It's not going to work. And on the same topic as variables, number of employees is being stored as a string here, but I need it to be stored as a number. 
Uh, so we are going to delete this column, start again. And this time, instead of the type being string, we'll change this to number. Because remember, this is a valuable, uh, this is a variable in the format number when we're asking or retrieving it from our user. Okay, the table names are not in the variable name. Yeah, exactly. Like it's there's no connection between the table and the variable um, so far. But let's fix that. Let me show you. So we head back to our bot. We've collected all of this information from our user, and right away I want to store it uh, to my table. So we're going to use for this feature the insert record. So I'm going to pop this here, and this is what's going to happen. So my user arrives here. They get prompted for some questions. They answer those questions. As soon as they answer that question, they're not going to see this, but behind the scenes, I'm going to add their information to my leads table. And so all of this happens automatically whenever they get to this part in your bot's workflow, and so you don't have to do anything yourself. So this is how the insert record cards work. You start by selecting the table you'd want to store the information in, and it's going to show you all of the columns that we made. So name, I'm going to type in the variable workflow.userName. Email, I'm going to type in the variable workflow.userEmail. And employees, remember at the beginning of the stream I told you this, ver this icon means that we, this, tr this uh, field supports variables. We're going to put at workflow.num employees. And so we're done. So now what's going to happen is uh, our table is going to be stored with all of the information in our leads. But I am, uh, I'm going to say neurotic. So I love to test everything uh, to infinity and beyond. So let's try this a couple of times. So I'm going to, uh, in chat, can you provide me with some like example names <laughs> and example numbers? Uh, I'm, I'm going to start with the first one. So I'll say soup at uh, suegmail.com. And then number of employees is that many. OK, and then I'll end the conversation here. And I'll try that one more time. Uh, and I'll say coffee. Uh, coffee espresso is my name. Ooh, that's, it. <laughs> that's a nice person. Uh, they're going to be called coffee at gmail.com. And there they work for a company of 12 people. And then maybe I'll do a couple more examples of this just to make sure that it's working. And I'll call this one um, microphone. And this guy's going to be mike at gmail.com. And he works for a company of uh, 99 people. And I'll end the conversation there. And so what should have happened is all of those leads that I just emulated should be appearing in that leads table. So let's go take a look. Uh, so here we have name, email, employees. For name, one thing I want to say is this variable is stored as a JavaScript object called, um, and the, the format of this JavaScript ob object is first and last. So if you want to reference your user's first name, you can do this. Their last name, you can do this as well. Um, you see here, I didn't put a last name for when I was soup, so there's no uh, last name here. That's why the null appears there. We have their email and the number of employees. Bum, bum, bum. And so now, what is the next thing that I think most reasonable people want to do when presented with lots of information, but they have a goal in mind? Um, they want to filter that information, right? They want, to, they want to f the ability to search that information in a certain way using certain filters. Um, right now, we can scan at a glance because I've only got three examples here, but you all have booming businesses. And so what we want to see is if you've got like hundreds and hundreds of rows, um, sometimes even sorting by uh, top to bottom or biggest to highest, biggest to lowest doesn't necessarily solve your use case. Um, so let me show you what will. In the top right, in the inspector window over here, uh, you'll see the table selector will ask you or prompt you to create your first data selector. So we do this, um, and this is what happens. We get shown here a name, so we can label the selector. And we're shown a box here uh, that says, type here to generate suggestions. And so what's happening here is your bot is asking you, what kind of information do you want to search for? And this icon here, if you're familiar with BotPress, it should tell you this is the Gen AI icon. So this will um, allow you to type your filter or type or search for the kind of information you want to see without using code, but you could just uh, use natural language. So let's say um, uh, what I want to see 
is, and I'm going to say this as I would to maybe like my analyst uh, or like my data scientist partner who is going to say, I'll say like over 75 employees. So I only want to see companies that have over 75 employees. When I hit enter, what should happen is dum -da -da -dum, that the company where there was only 12 employees goes away. So you can imagine if you had, for example, a list of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, potential leads, but you wanted to filter out all of those ones that weren't qualified based on the criteria you identify, uh, you could do that as well. So let me just really quickly uh, refresh this. Don't look at my bookmarks and don't roast me on how many bookmarks I have. <laughs> Uh, sometimes, dum -dum -dum. yeah. All right, so what I just did there was I refreshed the studio a couple of times because what I wanted to have happen was I wanted this play icon to appear. So I'm going to hit, um, I'll relabel this over 75 employees, and I'll make a new selector. So this is the first one, but maybe my boss wants to see like um, over 1,000 employees too. And so now we should only see one, and that's great. Um, and I'm just going to refresh one more time. Bot press pro tip, sometimes you just have to refresh. <laughs> uh, here we go, over a thousand employees. Uh, so if you were the person in chat that was asking about uh, filtering data or searching through data in a table, this is how you would do it. So I'll just make sure that we relabel this over a thousand employees, close this. And now the play icon should indicate to you like, uh, we're going to be running these selectors. So I want to see over 75 employees. I've got soup and I've got microphone. But over 1,000 employees, it's just soup, and that's the only one. Um, so you can execute each of these selectors using these icons. And so uh, I hope that if you're like in maybe the lead gen department or you're you're like in the stats department of whatever company you work for, maybe it's just you, uh, and you want it, you want a, an easy way to filter through some of those leads or some of that information, this is the way that I would suggest doing it. Uh, so you have tables here. You don't need to integrate Google Sheets. You don't need to integrate Airtable. You don't need to integrate Zapier. You could do all of that if you want to, but if it's really something simple like lead filtering, um, I would strongly, re I love to minimize the amount of tools I'm using. So if you can do it in BotPress, hey, why not? So those are selectors. Um, I wanna say, if you're watching this, the, the natural question you might be having is like, okay, the next time, the next thing I wanna see is allow my user to use those selectors as well. Like maybe my user wants the ability to query a database in the same way or a query a table in the same way. I'm gonna say that's not possible yet, but like, again, I have something in my eye um, and it's just making me wink a little bit. All right. So those are table selectors. So we're now like, uh, we are 45 minutes into our bot project. So at this time, I usually go, you know, take a little walk. Uh, it's raining today, so I can't do that. And also I'm working. Uh, but typically I, go, I would go for a walk and then I would come back and revisit it with fresh eyes and, uh, and go from start to finish and see what my bot's doing. And if it's like meeting all of my needs or if there's something else I needed to do. So start from the beginning, bot starts the conversation, greets the user, shows them some information about bot press. Uh, here we collect information about our lead. And then if they have a question about bot press, we'll send them over to the question node. And then maybe I can fix this. Maybe I can make this a bit better. So, you know, before I went for my walk, the experience was I'm going to ask my user if they have any other questions, but maybe that experience isn't great. And maybe there's something else I want to do. Uh, so let me close this and I'll delete these and I'll, I'll rethink my strategy here. So now there are really only two scenarios when you ask a question. The first is you received an answer. And the second is you didn't receive an answer. Uh, at the end of the day, those are the only two scenarios that you have. So here I'll pop in a flow logic card um, and I'm gonna say, here's what I wanna have happen uh, when my user didn't receive an answer from uh, the question they, for the question they asked. So, hello, can you do something? <laughs> All right, so what's happening here is I'm just trying to adjust the flow to, by deleting this, uh, this, this path that I drew. So how do I check if my bot was able to respond to this question based on the information it has in the knowledge base? I'll check the quick reference guide because I love this feature, and I'm not just saying it because me and Patrick, you saw Patrick earlier, <laughs> built it together. Um, but here, this variable checks if the bot was able to respond to a question based on the information it has in its knowledge base. I'll copy it, I'll place it here, I'll turn off the generative AI feature, 
and I'll make sure that it's negated. So what we're doing here is we're saying, if you weren't able to answer a question from the knowledge base, then go to this place. And so here, maybe I'll say something like, um, oops, couldn't answer that. Uh, what would you like to do next? So here, what I'm accounting for is like, okay, so my bot wasn't able to answer based on the information on my website. Maybe it's because they asked a question that I couldn't answer. Maybe that information isn't available there. Maybe it's somewhere else, um, so on and so forth. I see David in chat has said, Robert, when you get a chance, maybe rename the flow logic transition card. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, so here you'll see it's called always because that's the default one, but I'll say uh, cannot respond. All right, so now how would we handle this? If I, if I, don't, if I, can't, um, if I can't answer a question for you, as a business owner, what I would love to do is say, okay, I can't answer this question for you, but why don't you reach out to me and maybe we can, uh, we can have a chat maybe with our sales team. But let's not forget we've done all this work because i as a business owner am interested in filtering out leads that don't have more than 100 employees so uh, if you're an org and you you have fewer than 100 employees i just can't justify having my account executive talk to you it just doesn't make sense so here's how we do this um remember we capture that information so at this point in the bots conversation when it can't answer from your knowledge base your bot knows how many employees work for the company of the user that they're speaking to. Let's leverage that information to make sure that we don't waste our account executive's time. Um, Alex, I'm sure you're not watching this, but uh, <laughs> if you are, this, is, this one's for you. So I'm gonna pop this open here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add more of those expression variables. So uh, what I'm doing is defining the conditions for this transition. And what I mean by that is, if the, employee, if the number of employees is less than a certain amount, I want them to get sent down one conversational path. If the number of employees is higher than the certain amount, I want them to get sent to another conversational path. So those are, two, those are my two different criteria here. Let's see how we do that. I'll take my expression card. I'm going to uh, use the generative AI this time. And I'm going to say if the variable num employees is um, gr greater than uh, 100. So let's see what just happened there. When I hit enter, the generative AI was running, and now it wrote down the conditions for this transition. This is a pretty simple example, but this supports all kinds of complex use cases. So there are different ways that you can play with this, but I wanted to show you a pretty simple example here. Now, this is for variable greater than 100. What about if it's less than? I still want those people to have some kind of meaningful resolution, even if it's not the same one. Um, so I'm gonna use an expression card again. I'll pop this here. And I'll say, um, if the variable num employees is less than or equal to 100. And so, <laughs> less than and equal. Yeah, thank you, David. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Uh, David is my, you can think of David in chat as like the, um, the, the angel on my shoulder, only uh, with even better hair than me, if you can imagine. All right. So now we've accounted for these two cases. Uh, so if they have less than 100 employees, I'm just going to pop them over. Maybe I'll say like, I'll send them a file um, and I'll send a send message card as well. So I'll say you can learn more in this um, piece of documentation. And let me show you. Uh, I want to use a file card here because I wanted to show you all the different cards that BotPress offers. But you can just send people a PDF. That is definitely something you can do. Um, this is uh, just a PDF I have handy, and I'll say uh, bot press info. And if they have more than 100 employees, um, I'm going to pause here for a sec. There are two ways you could handle this. The first is you could say something simple like reach out to uh, our sales exec using this email. That's a very safe, neutral way to go about this. And the more advanced use case here, and this is maybe something I'll like, I'll leave you with as a teaser. <laughs> Of, uh, of maybe some more advanced skills in bot press because this definitely falls outside the scope of, of this weekly live stream. Um, but what I want to say is you can call external APIs with bot press. And what that means is, let's say you're using a service like Calendly to manage your sales exec's calendar. You can just call that directly from bot press. So uh, your bot will be able to schedule meetings uh, for you using whatever external, if the 
booking service you use has an API that supports this, you can just call that API this way. Uh, maybe if you're if you're watching the stream, you're likely a beginner. So let's talk about APIs for like a brief second. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it allows you to have two applications speak to each other. So in this case, that would be like BotPress plus your booking service. If you don't know what this is, there's likely a software engineer on your team who does. But if you do know what I'm talking about, uh, then the more sophisticated way or the more advanced way of handling this would be to do that. But of course, BotPress is for everyone, so you don't have to do an API if you don't want to. You can just send something simple like, uh, please reach out to our sales team here, um, sales at goodcompany.com. And it's as simple as that. Um, so I've reached this part of my bots flow where I've ignored naming my nodes, which I hate. So let's keep back. Let's go back and do that. Um, so I'll call this one couldn't answer. I'll call this one reach out to sales. And I'll call this last one uh, send PDF. And so now I, I just want to show off how neat it is when you uh, name all of your nodes something representative or indicative of what they are. So we've got welcome, we've got visit, user info, question, couldn't answer, reach out to sales or send PDF. This is a really simple flow. It incorporates a lot of BotPress's functionalities. We've asked questions, we've stored information to a table, we've queried that table, we've searched our website, uh, we've gathered information from our user, we've diverted their conversational path based on how many employees they have at their company, which is information they've supplied us with, and then we've adjusted their outcome uh, or their resolution based on this. So all in all, this bot took me like 55 minutes to make, uh, and I would say this is like a, a pretty robust, very basic bot if all you're interested in doing is just capturing information on your leads. Uh, and this took me an hour to get off the ground, and let's be real, I spent half the time talking about my hair, so I'm sure you could do this much quicker. Um, I hope that this was helpful. I will say we've got about five minutes left, so if you're in chat and you're still watching and you, you've got questions uh, that I didn't address here, feel free to pop them in chat. I'll spend the last couple of minutes uh, hanging out and, and talking uh, about these questions. If you don't have questions, that's fine. You're also just welcome to hang out. Um, if you're watching the recording of this later on, what I want to say is uh, let me know if there are other questions or things that you want to see. Would love to see you on our Discord server sometime. Uh, that's, you know, we do these live once a week. Uh, if you're interested in doing things like uh, building an integration or calling an external API, I would say come hang out on Thursday's live stream. Those are based on, uh, for developers. Um, I want to say there are roles on our Discord server. So if you don't have a, a role that pings you uh, based on which stream you'd like to attend, just uh, check out the channels and roles section on our Discord server. If you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, it's just on the, on the left-hand side menu of the of the Discord server here. Bum, bum, bum. Um, I see <laughs> Fer, Ferdelis. I'm, I, I'm butchering that for sure, but I see you typing. And not to add any pressure, but I'm like dying to see what this question is. Uh, for maybe for now, let's check if this works. So I'll say hi. Uh, my name is Jeans. My email is jeans at gmail.com. I'm wearing jeans today. Uh, how many people work for my company? 999. I want to get sent down the correct path. Um, I have a question about BotPress, and I don't want them to be able to answer my question. So I'll say, um, when has Jane Fonda used this service? Shouldn't be able to answer this. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, oops, couldn't answer that. Ah, see, so in testing, I found out that uh, I left this in my message. So let me delete that and revisit the conversation. I got sent down the right path because I was 999 employees. And of course, I don't believe Jane Fonda has ever used BotPress. Jane Fonda, if you're watching this and you've used BotPress, um, send us an email. Would love to sponsor you. <laughs> you wrote something in cards in English. Is it possible to translate to a different language? Translate bot covers this scenario. Yeah, so your translator agent should be able to first recognize or set what language your user or your bot should be talking in uh, and then understand what uh, what language it should be responding in. So absolutely, that is that is definitely possible. Um, I'm going to say, uh, Sabrina or David, is it possible to link in chat uh, the video that Gordy put together about um, changing your bot's language in BotPress? I think that would be really helpful here. Yeah, thank you. 
Uh, maybe too early, what's on the menu for Thursday? Hey, that's a great question. It's a, that is a question for Jesse because he does manage those streams. However, I know that I believe the menu that they're currently in the process of doing is building an, an integration. So if, if there's like a third party service like Trello or something that um, we don't currently have a built-in integration for, Jesse is showing you how to build those. Uh, those are all open source. So again, like this, the spirit of open source and building together, um, I believe that's what's going on. Uh, so Sabrina's got you there with that video for three ways to change your bot's language at BotPress. For Delis, Daniel, there you go. Da Daniel, I hope that's that's helpful for you. Uh, if you run into questions there, we're on the, the help channel um, all the time. Uh, but usually business hours, EST. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, all right. If there are no other questions, and also it is like uh, Robert's hungry. <laughs> Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna end the stream there, but uh, please reach out to you can ping me on the server. Uh, you can hang out in general if you've got questions. Uh, feel free to send those messages over there. I want to say thank you to everyone uh, who came to hang out today. It was enjoyable as always. I hope you found this challenge uh, slightly different than uh, than what we usually do. Uh, and if again there are things that you want to see later on, please just let me know. I'm always happy to to show you. Um, happy bot building, everybody! Bye.